A detective that spends his life chasing the phantom of his late mother gets involved in an investigation after the body of a woman is found in mysterious conditions. This could be the lead to finally bring his search to an end. This is the story of the crimes that Blind released in 2018. Without further ado, let's get started. At the beginning we see a woman in a job interview, she's Tajima Yuriko, she just got into Sendai. The owner, Miyamoto, hires her as an apprentice. She seems to do alright even though she has it rough when it comes to talking about herself with the owner. The years passed and she had a nice performance, only having issues with one client ever, Watabi. 2001, a police station, they are investigating the death of Tajima Yuriko. She's been stabbed, Miyamoto and Watabi are shocked. They manage to contact Yuriko's son to bring him the news. She takes Yuriko's son to his mom's apartment, where he asks for more information about Watabi. The woman tells him where he might be able to find Watabi. But 16 years pass without news about Watabi, the year is 2018. In Katsushikaku, Tokyo, there's a commotion. There seems to be a dead body found in one of the apartments, and it's been dead for 20 days. The body was decomposed, and hard impossible to identify. She died by strangulation. The detective finds a lead that takes him to a bridge. The police have identified the woman as Oshitani Machiko, and got a lot of information about her, finding out that she had been missing for weeks. They also identified a suspect, Koshikawa Muto who's the owner of the apartment where they found the body. Matsumiya, the detective, says this crime could be related to the recent incident where they found a homeless person dead near the river. Even though the body was burned, strangulation was the cause of death. He thinks they are related for the same cause of death, the two incidents taking place only two days apart, in the area. Matsumiya also mentions that the residents of the body seem to belong more likely to a homeless person. The detectives visit the location where Oshitani, the victim, lived before to find out more about her. Apparently, she took a sudden trip to Tokyo with no apparent reason when it all happened. Matsumiya is worried they won't solve this. They don't get valuable information, and a new update on DNA tests show that the connection between the two deaths may be impossible. Matsumiya finds a possible new lead in a senior residence, Oshitani, apparently recognizing someone there. Oshitani thought it would be the mother of one of her old classmates, Asai Hiromi. The detective questions the woman about her daughter, she gets mad and kicks him out. Hiromi is a successful theater producer, and now the detectives go to question her. Hiromi acknowledges meeting with Oshitani the day before her death, who told her about her mother, but little more. She also mentions she hates her mother because she left her and her father, who even killed himself after that. We see Kyo, Yuriko's son, he's been working in Nahanbasha's police station, he goes for lunch with one of the detectives. He mentions he knows Hiromi from as he taught her and her class Kendo. The police had a suspicion on Asai Hiromi, but it was apparently cleared. Kyo says that Hiromi thinks of herself as a murderer for having an abortion. They catch up on the investigation, and Kyo helps him out. They find a DNA connection between this case and the burned body one. Matsumiya is still intrigued by the bridge. Kyo goes out to meet with Hiromi at her play. Matsumiya is researching the bridges on the notes on the calendar, on the first one he meets Kyo and thanks him for the help. He goes to check Takiwa's bridge first and tells Kyo of the name of the bridges listed on the calendars. Kyo snaps and presses him to give the names of the calendar, Kyo knows them all in order. He found the same thing in his mother's apartment 16 years ago, a calendar with the names of the bridges. Those were the places his mom would meet with Watabi. Kyo asks to do a handwriting comparison analysis, they both match up perfectly. Apparently this handwriting was to be Watabi's. Kaga Kyo joins the investigation for this case, and they go to Sendai to talk with Miyamoto to see if she could identify Watabi as one of the police sketches. She identifies the face of the sketch of the suspect Koshikawa, Mutsuo as Watabi. He changed his name. Nobody really knew what Yuriko left her son and went away leaving a note to not look for her. She had a troubled relationship with his father and had mental breakdowns and was unhappy in her marriage. They find that Watabi had changed his name in the past, as if he was running from something. Kaga and Matsumiya go to the bridges on the list to see what they can find. In July's bridge they have a tradition called Hashi Arai where thousands of people from the locality come together to clean the whole thing. Kyo gathers thousands of photos from the Hashi Arai to see if he can identify Watabi there. 
The police find a lead to the nuclear plant where Watab used to work and ask around for someone who knew him. Kyo finds Hiromi in one of the pictures, he goes to talk with some of the people in her class. Apparently, they know of a man who was Oshitani and Hiromi's contact, the teacher Namora but they say he disappeared, they only have a picture, he's similar to the sketch of Watabi. Kyo goes to meet with Nimura's ex-wife, Amai Kayoko, he had cheated on her and left her. Apparently, Namora had bought an expensive ruby necklace, Kyo thinks Hiromi has it, and sends Matsumiya to take a picture of her old photograph in her place to verify. In the old picture, she does have the ruby crucifix. Nakamura gave it to her when they were having an affair, that's right, they were having an affair. But, he left her after the abortion. The police suspects that Oshitani knew about it and blackmailed Hiromi, and that Hiromi got Namora to murder Oshitani. They even think Asai strangled and burned Namora later to dispose of the evidence. But it all fell down when Matsumiya showed Miyamoto the picture of Namora, she didn't recognize him to be Watabi. Matsumiya and Kyo are stuck again in the investigation. Kyo's father's caretaker, Tokiko Kanamori is angry at him, she knew his father in his final days and knows that he loved Kyo a lot, even though Kyo despised him. Kyo is conflicted, he still thinks Hiromi is heavily involved, but he's still stuck. Wondering all the possibilities. Kaga thinks he might be key to solving the case, so he evaluates their connections. He thinks it has to do with Hiromi's father, and that she had some secret reasons to take her students into his martial arts class, so he goes to question her with Tokiko, pretending to be another detective. Apparently, she had asked for his direction 16 years ago, and asked to interview him. He tells her that her classmates believed her father jumped off a building, but there's no record of this. He pressures them on her father's cause of death. He implies that teacher Namora helped her do a flit and even covered for her. He suspects that Hiromi's father became non-existent, and not really committed suicide. Kanamori took a hair sample from Hiromi. Matsumiya calls Kyo to tell him that one of the workers at the plant woke up in the hospital, and recognized the man in the sketch to be Yokoyama, Kazatoshi. But it turns out that Yokoyama, Kazatoshi and Watabi Shunichi can be written with similar characters, so they think it's the same person changing his name. So the Watabi name was fake, they are trying to locate him. Apparently Hiromi took a bullet train leaving Tokyo. Kaga asks for a DNA test to check a father-daughter's relationship between Watabi and Asai. Since there's no record of the man jumping from the building, Kaga believes it was all a fake story Asai made up. Meanwhile, she went to see her mother to scold her for being a useless, horrible person. She recalls how her father, Tadao, was constantly attacked by the Yakuza for his debts caused by her, and how they almost took her when she was young. And how they had to run away from home and start from zero, living on the run. Her father even told her he was thinking of ways to end his life, and a story of a monk that burned himself to death, and how that was a horrible way to die. They meet a man that worked at a nuclear plant, He's a migrant working on different nuclear plants, he's Yokoyama, Kazutoshi, but he can't hook Hiromi's father up with a job like that. He offers Hiromi money for sex, even though she's underage. Hiromi and her dad stay at a nice hotel, she's worried because they don't have the money to pay. While her father takes a long bath, she goes to take Kazutoshi's offer. A while later her dad's looking for him, when they meet, she's covered in blood, she had stabbed and killed Kazutoshi with chopsticks. Her father comes up with a plan, she'll go back to the hotel, and claim her father disappeared. He'll throw Kazutoshi's body of a cliff, and she'd identify him as her dad, faking a suicide. He confesses he already had planned to kill himself there, but instead, he'd take up on Kazutoshi's life. This way Hiromi had a house at the orphanage, he'd write to her under a fake name in the future. After her visit to her mom, Asai's mother went insane and couldn't make sense, she shook her brain. Asai and her father met when she decided to direct instead of acting, he mentioned that his dream was to see her at Meijiza, and that when he dies he wants to haunt that theater, to see her plays as much as he wants. He even told her about his relationship with Yuriko. But Professor Namora saw them together, and later talked with him. Tadao and Asai thought of the plan of meeting in the Twelve Bridges. Especially the bridge near Meijiza, where she dreamed of coming back as a director. And when she finally did, her father went to the first day of the play, but there was also Oshitani in the audience that day. Surprised to recognize Asai's dead father alive there in the audience, she tried to question him on the matter after the play. 
Tadao couldn't let her go now, that she knew if truth came to light, Asai would be ruined. He took Oshitani to his apartment and killed her there. Kyo's already concluded all this, and he also says that it was Asai Hiromi that strangled and burned her father. So on the last day of the play, Kyo goes to see it with Asai. He tells her that they've already identified that the burned body was her father with DNA. She says that when she saw her father a couple days after the play, he looked like the night he was going to kill himself. He left her a letter, she followed him, and found that he was going to burn his place. He told her that he killed Oshitani, and that 16 years ago he killed Namora when he inquired. He now wanted to die. Finally setting himself on fire, but she remembered of his fear of burning to death. She wanted to help him die. She had to strangle him to death for a calmer way to go, and then burned his tent with him. At the end of the play, Asai gave Kyo a letter her father wrote to him before his death. In the letter, he says that Kaga's mother had depression, she had even considered suicide. One time, when her husband was away, she wanted to commit suicide and also take Kyo's life with her, but she couldn't handle the thought of it, so she had to leave home. When he visited Tokyo, he saw that Kyo and his dad were alright, and that he was winning in Kendo, and brought the news to Yuriko. She was so proud of the man he became. And this, also helped her stay at peace during her final days. Dreaming of being with her son. Subscribe for more engaging videos like this. Hit the bell icon and be the first to watch, like and comment.